Hey guys and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to be talking about trauma bonding. It is a viewer requested video as one of my viewers believe they are trauma bonded with their narcissist. But I'm sure many of you are also questioning and wondering if you are as well. So let's talk about this. Trauma bonding has most likely occurred when you meet a toxic person and they present themselves as, you know, everything that you've hoped for. They love bomb you, such as the narcissist, and they're giving you all this love and affection, and you are sold on this being who the person is, okay? So then when a relationship moves on to the devalue stage, you will find yourself making excuses for this person and thinking they've had an off day or accepting shit, um, the blame for it, thinking that, oh, okay, you know what? I'm the reason why this person is doing this. It's something that I'm doing. And then you're working hard to get this person to go back to the love bomb stage. And then eventually they devalue you. And this cycle is going on over and over. They come back and they're acting sweet again. And you're thinking, okay, now I got this person back. Everything's back to normal. I have the real person back. But then they start devaluing again and it's you get used to this cycle over and over and it becomes normal to you and you basically living for the love bomb stage period to come back around. And this is the trauma bond. You are more than likely biochemically, you know, attached to this as well as your body is releasing hormones throughout these stages and when it stays in this cycle over and over your mind gets used to it so you become number to it and this becomes your norm so you're trauma bonded with the person at this point but really in the nucleus of trauma bond, there's confusion, basically. The person is confused. They're still holding on to the, idealize, the idealization of what they thought that person was. They're still holding on to the love bomb stage. They're still living for the love bomb stage. They're still stuck on the love bomb stage. <clears throat> and they're not seeing things for what it is at this point which is the love bomb stage is just the way of the toxic abusive person keeping you on the leash. They know they have to sprinkle that in there from time to time to not only mind fuck you, but keep you around for when they want to come back around. Okay, so I just got finished treating this person horrible. Now all I have to do is come and tell this person everything they want to hear, maybe even act like it briefly. I have them back in my grasp. And before you know it, I'll be able to spill out all my toxic, all my toxicness over them again. And the cycle just goes on over and over. Now, because the person is sprinkling this, this love and a quote unquote love and affection on you, it creates a conflict with the person that is trauma bonded with them because they're thinking or accepting this as real and true love and affection when it's not. So that's why I say at the nucleus of the trauma bond is a lot of confusion, a lot of confusion. And the person that is being abused is conflicted between thinking this person loves them and that they're just having these bad days and moments. And then once they even realize that the person, okay, this is just a toxic person, they've created and attached themselves so highly and emotionally to this um, toxic person. And they've biochemically gotten so used to these patterns that it almost, it feels awkward and weird to break away from it because you're used to that cycle. And this is where the no contact comes to play. And that's why when people say, oh, well, at least do things for three weeks to a month um, to start breaking the cycle. Like the, the longer you're away from that toxic person, the more you can get used to not having them around. But the only thing that I'll say about narcissistic abuse is, you know, they've been known to go years, um, decades even, and then they'll hoover back on a person. And sometimes that can be success, um, 
that could be successful for them. Because sometimes time, you know, time will heal the wound and the person will kind of forget what it was because they've been away from it. And then, you know, we're giving people the benefit of the doubt and thinking that they've changed and let that person back in. So we have to be careful because narcissistic abuse is one of those things where even if a lot of time goes by, you can do a lot of healing, but this person can find a way to try to love bond themselves back into your life and then do the same thing again. So I really want you guys to caution yourselves, especially, you know, when this narcissist comes back around and sometimes we have situations where we may have to have some type of communication um, with this narcissist or interaction with them. Perhaps you're trying (laughs) to co-parent with them or something of that nature where this narcissist may be around in some shape or form and then you have to learn how to deal with the narcissist in that sense. But for the rest of you that don't have children, don't have any real ties to this narcissist, let that person go, honey. Let them go. Let them go. And the trauma bond will make it feel uncomfortable. And I've said this in another video where I talked about trauma bonding, um, working against your spirit because your flesh is working against your spirit. And then if you are having sex with them, you have the soul tie as well. And your flesh is working against your spirit. And then the trauma bond is more mental, obviously, because it's psychological. So your mind and your body is then working against you. Okay, guys. So the trauma bond is basically when a person has gotten used to the toxic cycles of abuse and they actually, they're They've accepted the the nasty parts of it because they want the good part. The little crumbs and sprinkles of the good parts have made um, the bad parts become smaller and smaller and smaller. And this is why they keep going back. Not only that, they've, they've created a massive pattern, a massive pattern that becomes harder to break because as I said, we're releasing these hormones, we're bonding with them through sex, and the biochemistry part of everything. So that's why no contact and staying away from it is is your best bet and hope for breaking these things. It's the only way really. And then even with that, we still have to be careful because these narcissists can come back. They always try to come back. Nine times out of 10, they always try to come back. Okay, and and distance and time can be put into that. So we don't want to ever forget. We always have to be careful, guys. We have to be careful. So I hope this is helping someone to begin to understand um, trauma bonding. You know, it's quite complex, but really in the simplest form, like I said, it's confusion. Is confusion. You're thinking your abuser cares about you and loves you on some level. And then even once you understand, okay, this person is toxic and bad for me, you're thriving off of that um, pattern of abuse because you've become so accustomed to it. And the sprinkles of quote unquote love and affection that they're giving you during the short brief times that it's good, it's overriding the bad parts to you. Okay, and then the bond and the connection, you know, is reinforced and it continues over and over and over, guys. So you have to, you have to go into the fire, you have to feel that burn, you have to break it, you have to feel that awkwardness, you have to go through that discomfort of breaking the soul tie. I've done it, I've done it, I've gone through it and I know how hurt full and painful and challenging and difficult it can be when you are stuck in that pattern to break it. But oh my gosh, when you do break it, it's a beautiful feeling and you will be happy that you did. Because as long as you're in it, you're not going to get what you deserve and you can't have the best for your life. You're inviting a toxic person in. You're inviting a toxic lifestyle Okay, so I hope this video is helping someone. If it does, go ahead and hit the like button. If you haven't done so yet, 
please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell so that you can be notified when I upload videos. Um, I do offer coaching um, via telephone, email, and Skype. I have books to help people heal from toxic relationships. They're available on Amazon.com. Um, you can check out the description for that, guys. And until next time, please continue to do the work and, and keep in mind the long-term goals versus the short-term discomforts. And I've made a video on that. And I'll leave the link to that in the description as well. You can do this. You can do this. You can become healthier. You can have better in life. You can get out of this toxic relationship. There is a way out. You are not stuck. You always have the option. You just have to take it. Yes, you will have to fight against your flesh. You will have to fight against your mind initially because your mind is toxic right now and it needs to be retrained. Okay, guys, take care.